Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It is I, Emily Sophia, here to break down the latest episode of Bates Motel for you guys. We are on season three, episode five already, The Deal. So spoiler alert before we dive into the mad thick of things, as I will be bearing all in this review. If you are jumping in on my reviews for the very first time today, there are plenty of links in the description to other shows as well as to the rest of my Bates Motel reviews. And I have reviewed almost the entire show so far. And it really bums me out that the ratings have dipped this season when in fact things are here up in such a crazy way. We're getting so many fresh stories and all of it is just kind of combining into whatever insanity we're ultimately going to end up at. But did I already do my spoiler alert? Well, well, spoilers are coming, so be forewarned. Check yourself before you wreck yourself. We're going to go ahead and dive into the mad thick of things. So, let's do this. Um... <laughs> Man, this, we're at a point in time where this show is simply in no way interested in letting up on us. And what we really got to see this week was the, the brilliance and the beauty and the devastation that is Norma Bates. We get to see two very interesting sides of Norma um, over the course of this episode. The first one being Norma in Confrontation and then Norma in retreat, or perhaps the way that she has reacted to the news of Caleb being back in town is her way of confronting the problem in, in sort of a almost backwards kind of way. But when you think about how she could be looking at the situation from her perspective, like to, to stay where she is and to know that Caleb is in a place where he knows where she is, the only way to confront the problem is to completely be gone. And would she have taken Norman with her on her delightful little uh, road trip of, of rage and despair if he hadn't sort of sided with, with Dylan? Now, that was a really interesting twist because I was thinking at the very beginning of the episode, especially when we see Norman making a closet raid to check out that blue dress he thought his mother was wearing that morning. Huh? uh Say no to the dress, my fine sir. <laughs> we are not going to that territory yet. Like you say earlier in the episode, you are becoming a man and you don't want to be the little boy who becomes violent over someone else working their way into the heart of your mother. You know, all this stuff. Anyway, so looking, <laughs> looking at the beginning of the episode, I, I had this very distinct thought to myself of like, Wow, we are already booking it down the highway to hell and there is just no stopping this train. But then all of a sudden we get this moment and of course it's in the, you know, it's in Taxidermy Central where Dylan and Norman have this rare and it could potentially even be their very last heart to heart over the situation. And Dylan has resigned himself to actually telling Norma the truth after the false call of uh, Norman stating that he already did so. Whoops, he was talking to this mother <laughs> who's wearing the blue dress that he loves so much. So, um, yeah, there was that. But all of a sudden he has this moment of clarity where he, so he understands now that there are forces within him that he, he can't fully control, but he wants to. And so we're really getting to see that battle come back to the forefront, which is good to see because, I mean, it's always disconcerting when we know generally where this character is going to go and is he going to go that way too soon and are we going to have to deal with, you know, however many more seasons of Norma being on the complete and utter brink and Norman being a very apparent danger. Like, that just really wouldn't work. The tension wouldn't be the same if we're just living with this crazy rogue Norman who is already pretty much the psycho incarnate like he can't get there quite yet but we know I, I do get a sense that the writers are going to linger in that territory when we get there and build it up as best they can I'm, I'm sure they're gonna do a great job with it but anyways so that was a very surprising and cathartic and relieving moment for all of us who are sitting here like oh I you know missing this relationship that Norma and Norman 
once had. And while it seems on the outside that in many ways they're growing further apart, they're growing closer because Norman is internalizing more. Rather than coming to his physical mother, he is starting to experience these um, departures from reality in which he is constructing a separate reality where he's interacting with his mother. Now he's kind of starting to figure it out, judging by the fact, you know, he found out his mom was not wearing the same dress that morning, et cetera, et cetera. He knows on some level that there is this split and he wants to just have his one mother. But at some point, somebody's gonna be taking over his perceptions, okay? Um, yeah, but what an incredibly devastating moment, this family that Dylan has strived so hard for, and Norman finally siding with him, understanding his need for a father, which is quite ironic considering that uh, Norman killed his own own father, but we we understand the circumstances. And so we also understand why all this time Norman has been so adamantly against Caleb and actually tried to kill him last season, because we, we know what he has been through as well. And for Dylan, this um, Caleb was just an, an absence. And they're kind of starting to build this relationship, but on what foundation? You know, in light of the knowledge that there was this rape, but then Dylan has come to this point where he sees the, the agony in in his father uncle and he he sees this whole other side that he cannot help but feel obligated to bring forward he wants he wants to have healing in his family he doesn't want for norma and caleb to be together because it's not going to happen but he wants to stop seeing this torture and he wants his father to settle he wants himself to settle and i'm sure that he feels that by facilitating this It'll all come together, have a little kumbaya around the Bates Motel. But that is not to be. And I have to say, freaking Vera Farmiga, every week she pulls something new out of her suitcase of tricks. And this week it was the epic stare down at her sons across the table as she is being delivered this news that is, in essence, for her, a giant ultimatum. And she's already. She's already making up her mind over the course of this entire thing. And Norman is trying to be the arbiter and the hear him out, mother. It's his father. And I think that just snaps it for her because she thinks that on some level she's got Norman in her pocket. And surely he's going to be the one to advocate for her. And she didn't even see his whole display in the wood. <laughs> what am I doing? Like, what up? <laughs> she doesn't even see or didn't see Norman's whole display in the woods as he was raging to go tell mother and whoops accidentally went to the wrong mother. It happens, you know, you think you're going one way, get rerouted into your own brain. And I understand that happens to me a lot of the time. But uh, yeah, maybe I should talk to that, uh, what, Finnegan, Fillion, the hipster bearded college professor guy. I don't know. He seems like a good guy to talk to about that stuff. Hopefully Norma will. <laughs> or something, but who knows what this woman is going to do. But that was the most epic stare down that I've ever seen. Like I said, just the ferocity in her eyes. And, you know, she and I both, we're, we're a part of the Blue Eye Club. And I get how, like, like when there are tears in your eyes or something that's like just behind it, it's it's weird kind of the quality that blue eyes can take on, especially Vera's. And so as she's looking down, it's ominous. It's scary. And that for me was almost kind of even a foreboding to like, you know, ultimately the, the death of mother. There was something just so, that scene was so just pregnant with things. <laughs> pregnant in the metaphorical sense. I really don't think Norma's in that kind of place right now. I don't think she needs to be adding more babies to the Bates clan. She's, uh, she's got some other fish to fry. Anyway, so yeah, that was such a frightening moment. But then we also get to see, and she's just coming down from this incredible victory. She has this enormous leverage over the entire town of White Pine Bay that has literally fucked her. Like, this is true. And she expresses this when she breaks down at Romero's. 
expressing how she deserves to have this power. She knows how the game works. And so why should she back down when this is her chance to finally come out on top, to finally substantiate herself in this place that has been nothing but cruel? And we think of how close she even came last season to abandoning this all, and yet here she is. She, she goes to Bob Paris. She, she delivers what she wants. I mean, you know, not without her freaking kicking her heeled leg. That was a hilarious shot with the, the camera, kind of that high angle. And we see, um, we just see Norma's leg, just her, her heels, just like, and that, that's totally me. I, I'm a fidgeter kicker when I'm waiting for anything. And then that contrasted to <laughs> Romero who has to just, no, <laughs> let's be smart and bring it down. Um, but yeah, so she has this huge moment. Um, so many, so many different experiences and encounters and just things that she is presented with and finally she gets a win. Finally she gets a leg up, or so it seems. I don't like the whole musical score thing that was playing. He's like, we have a deal, I guess. I mean, so who is that? That actor looks really freaking familiar. Do you, do you guys know? The actor playing Bob Paris, what else has he been in? He even looks like some like YouTuber guy. It's just like the eyes are super wide and that smile is just super, mm, I'm not digging it. It's, it's, it's very off-putting just because of sort of the, the charm factor and knowing that he is the, the owner of the Arcanum Club of all places. And so there's not, not a fraction of, of his face can be trusted, not a fraction of, of who he is. But it's interesting too to look at kind of how, how Bob and Romero are like those two paths that diverge in the yellow wood, you know, to bring a little bit of poetry into this. But in the meetings that the two of them have as Bob is in pursuit of his flash drive that has all the information about the, um, the money, uh, the revenue from the drug trade, um, and like talking about how Bob reveals that he actually brought in Marcus, who's the other runner up for sheriff, brought him in because Romero's not playing the game right. You know, he's kind of starting to buck the system and then he ends up teaming up with Norma who's also trying to buck the system. And again, their energies are just so not the same <laughs> that it's incredibly entertaining to watch. And of course you got all that romantic tension there. No like accidental, I think I'm kind of gonna kiss you, kind of gonna hug you. Like they they had this sort of clarifying moment between them that was, was pretty intimate. Still really funny to see the both of them in the hot seats and the negotiation chairs and how Romero is letting Norma take center stage. Praise the Lord. I mean, letting this woman step up and do her business, play with the big boys because she has earned that. And she has she has tried every possible way to get through the system to keep her hotel motel on the map. Um, and it appears that Bob is going to give that to her, but then it just, it makes her decision at the end of the episode so much more powerful and frightening because what is, what is she going to do exactly? Like, I, I'm trying to think of who she's going to end up running into first, you know, that's, that's kind of the piece that, that I'm not sure about. Um, I don't know. It could totally be that professor guy because we see that she she just kind of turns in, into putty when she's around him. Not like she's just like, uh. I mean, she's very straightforward at the diner with the whole like, um, I want to ask you for help, but you're attracted to me. Yeah, I think you're attracted to me. Okay, cool, whatever. <laughs> you know, like she's trying to establish this connection. And at this point, it, it would be kind of weird for her to run in this state of just total disarray to this guy that she doesn't even know that well, but she sees his openness and his honesty. And he was even talking about how he had to emotionally keep his parents together. And she had very emotionally absent and, and damaged parents as well. So it's like there, there is a, a bridge where the two of them meet, the two of them can cross together. So she might end up meeting that guy. I don't know. I have a bad feeling about him. He is a, a nice dude in, in a bad, bad world. A bad, bad world that me needs a uh, more boar jerky, according to Chick, uh, the freaking mountain man. <laughs> um, but mm, yeah, so 
what the freaking crap, Norma? Don't you be going away from us now. So I, I would be very curious to see what you guys think is going to happen with her. Where is she going to go? Is she going to go do freaking donuts in front of the bypass sign and raise more hell or, or what? You know, what is going to happen at this point? But yeah, this was this was totally her episode. I'm um, just super ridiculously powerful as always. Vera commands the scene and she plays Norma's spectrum of emotions with such such grace and on so many dime turns. I mean that that woman. <laughs> she is one of the unstable ladies that has um, found Norman to be a place of solace but yeah so there's a lot to break down in this episode. Of course we do get to see a bit of, of Caleb and he's trying to knock down a tree because he's upset. I still just, I struggle to really feel any empathy for him. I still do. I don't know. It's, it's really tough. It's really tough. There are a couple things he has said that are still just kind of like, oh, you really, if you truly cared about her, you would let this be once and for all. If you truly knew Norma, you know that she would throw her entire closet and raise hell as soon as she knows that you are within 10 miles of her location you know it's like I don't know I don't know but he has an interesting interaction with Chick who that's the guy's name yeah Mr. Mr. Elmer Fudd with the bunnies like draped all over <laughs> what a what a dude with his whole like wanna hug it out he's kind of he's kind of the comic relief at this point you know he's like the court gesture uh, not gesture, jester <laughs> of this show. Um, you're, if we're thinking like in terms of a Shakespearean comedy or whatever, he's totally that jester type. But I could also see there being more to him as well. There's sort of an ominousness. He's been in this business for a while. He has seen the thing leveled and he's trying to, um, trying to build things up from his end. Um, offers Caleb a job. Caleb's like, oh, I don't... Well, he, he's all saying, like, I don't think I'm going to stick around. I got my family now, da, da, da. So he's just kind of flopping around in the land of in-between, like, trying to be a good guy from a distance. But, huh. you know, he's still just kind of hiding in the shadows. And that's sort of out of necessity because reasons. See Norma. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Really tricky. I still don't like him. Sorry. Just, uh, it gives me them heebie-jeebies. And I am just going to trust my gut. And that's, that's about all that. Um, but yeah, so it's really fascinating to see how the story of the Bates family is intertwining with the greater story of, of White Pine Bay and sort of all these mysteries that are, that are unfolding and this advantage that, that Norma gets, just this, this immense stride forward. And I'm, I'm not trying to like break down my desk here, but, mm. and then also getting to see Norman trying to triumph over his inner demon, which is his self that follows after the mother he has recreated in his mind. Like, the fact that he's actually fighting that is really incredible. And it's what's going to keep us hanging in sort of this major suspense um, as the show goes forward. And I really hope that it lasts a while. Like, I could, I could see it going for, like, Maybe six seasons. I feel like that would be great. You know, ever since Breaking Bad knocked it out of the park with five seasons, I I wholly believe that less is more quality over quantity. As much as I would love to see the show go on and on and on, with we are starting to see the fuller picture. And they could really take it at any pace they want because they're building up this entire world bringing in these these other characters other alliances and again i just wonder are we going to end up like where psycho begins is there gonna be a time skip i mean i'm just so like thinking into the future now with all of these omens and things that we are seeing but um yeah just this this episode was by the norma and for the Norma. She was the star and and now the shooting star that is flying away like a meteor in outer space. <laughs> Lord Lord knows where exactly she is is going to land because it appears that in in one sense she's she's got this thing down, but 
now she's peacing out and that could spell out danger for her family if she because well when did she say that she was gonna actually like hand over the drive anyway you know so it's sort of like of course she's not really thinking the whole negotiations piece she's at, she's reacting very emotionally but with the person of Norma, everything is every kind of extreme, every pendulum swing. So it's like, maybe this for her is like pure logic, but still crazy to me that she's straight up left Norman. And I think that's going to send him spiraling back because, well, if he physically loses his mother, he is going to further substantiate the mother that he has created in his mind. This could even be the point where he starts dabbling in the um, dress-up land with, uh, with Mother. Now, a scene that I am very anxiously anticipating that um, was in one of the early trailers for the season was a scene where we see Norma with her, um, and it, it might, be, might be Mother, might be Mother, um, with her dress, um, her dress strap is like hanging down and like Norman is like pushing it down or so I don't know what's going on but I'm starting to think now depending especially depending on how long Norma is actually gone I think I think this is going to be the next the next um appearance of mother as he attempts to deal with her loss a very unforeseen consequence of him trying to be a decent person and and fight what's going on inside of him just Hello, Trasmini. So, thank you guys so much for watching this review. As always, it is an incredible pleasure. If you know other people that are into Bates Motel, into Psycho, tell them to go to Hulu or Netflix, wherever. I'm pretty sure that they're both streaming um, episodes of Bates Motel. So, get them on the Bates train. Send them on over my way. We'll have some good chats. And, uh, yeah. Breaking, not Breaking Bad, duh. Better Call Saul uh, finale is next on the docket so stay tuned for that if you're watching that show too which you should and breaking bad i'm just i'm just giving you some homework you know i'm i'm sure that you you weren't expecting that but it's a good kind of homework it's the kind that like makes you cry in a good way maybe you know it's all vicarious wonderland <laughs> stuff so anyways i'm gonna peace out here gotta get ready for the next show but thank you guys as always and as always I will be back before you know it.